Hey, hi, hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. I hope you're doing well. And I want to do a bit of a S here and discuss uh, a record that is turning five years old this year. 2016's Atrocity Exhibition from Danny Brown, the now, in my opinion, a legendary legend status. I think Danny's earned it. Legend fucking status Detroit rapper. This is my favorite record of his, and I named this my album of the year in 2016. And as this record gets older and older, I could not feel stronger in that decision. If you guys remembered, this uh, ranked pretty high on my top 200 albums of the 2010s as well. And yes, uh, every time I revisit, every time I go back and and once more every year, this album ages, uh, it just sounds darker and darker and more and more unique. And let's talk a little bit about exactly uh, why. Danny Brown, it's been a little bit now since we've heard like, you know, a new album from him. I mean, you know what I'm saying came out in 2019. But with that being before the pandemic year, that feels like <laughs> a lifetime ago, unfortunately. And there has been some talk and rumor recently of there being like a 40 album at some point, you know, essentially like the 10 year later sequel to his 30 mixtape, which he broke onto the scene with. And when Danny Brown came onto the scene, he had a totally unique delivery, vocal inflection, and listen to, you know, maybe that triple X mixtape to start, because I think Atrocity Exhibition uh, might be a bit much to swallow for anybody who is uh, totally new to Danny Brown. Now, Triple uh, X was a great project was a project that was chock full of personality, very funny, lewd, druggy bangers, as, as well as tracks where Danny gets quite introspective and delivers a lot of uh, social commentary and introspective uh, lyricism as well, where he kind of you know, reflects upon the darkness of his his vices, his personal life, and a whole host of different things. But a lot of the people, a lot of the young listeners that were taking to that project and taking to Danny Brown in general, like really seem to gravitate toward uh, his more party-oriented tracks, his more drug-oriented tracks. And Danny Brown, you know, sort of being a, a guy with a wild personality at the time, uh, you know, was happy to indulge in that. I think he sort of dove a little bit deeper into uh, that whole vibe with his old record that he came out with not too long after because, uh, you know, a lot of his uh, uh, party-style bangers and instrumentals that uh, had almost like a bit of a, you know, an electronic or an EDM flair, uh, you know, they were popping up on that record. Record. And, and it's a decent LP. It's not my favorite of his, but uh, uh, you know, you could hear him, especially in retrospect, sliding in that direction, given the demand of some of his fans at the time. And then following that, we have his switch over to Warp Records and then this album. Looking at this in full view of Danny's catalog thus far, and uh, you know, given the thoughts that he's put out about this album and, and the literal lyricism on it, uh, this thing is definitely like a reaction, an opposite reaction to you know all of that indulgence, all of that partying, all of that everything, all of that like pushing yourself to the edge, and, and not really just a reaction to that point in Danny's career, but like up until this point through his entire life, you know, he's been sort of like, you know, at least through his lyricism, kind of painting himself as this guy who's like really kind of living on the edge. And uh, Atrocity Exhibition in so many ways is like a despondent depiction of rock bottom, not in the literal sense that Danny Brown is living it out on the record, but, you know, rock bottom in the way that he's kind of like reflecting on a lot of this stuff and the, I guess, like, you know, danger and, and risks uh, that he's putting himself in by, uh, you know, continuing to live excessively in this way. And, um, okay, cool. I just, I, <laughs> I'm on it already. So yes, this record is a strong and hard reaction to and reflection on those years of excess. And, you know, truth be told, that's something, you know, Danny Brown has been musing about in his music for a long time, you know, die like a rock star. He's been, you know, writing lyrics and, and sort of like giving fans this narrative for a bit. But uh, as even Danny would probably tell you uh, on this very record uh, through the song, Ain't It Funny and, and other lyrics as well, him giving fans these nudges and winks and sort of like, hey, I'm in pain. Things are, you know, going, going horribly here. He would probably tell you again that the message was not really getting through. 
Uh, it, it wasn't, you know, apparent to some of his fans that he was going through a lot. He wasn't just kind of like indulging out of pure fun, but to kill the pain or fill a void. This record, I think, is Danny just trying to put that pain and, the, and that feeling of hitting rock bottom as plainly and as boldly and as unabashedly as he possibly could. That's literally what the opening track Downward Spiral is all about. That's literally what multiple tracks, as I said on this record, are all about. Whether you're talking about Lost, uh, whether you're talking about White Lines, whether you're talking about Pneumonia, the, the extremity and, and sort of like danger expressed on Dance in the Water. Ain't It Funny Once More is, is sort of like, you know, all about that cry for help, not being heeded, not being listened to. And don't get me wrong, this record isn't just like you know, uh, a pure torture chamber. It's not just like a pity party. It's not just a woe is me, feel bad for me party. In fact, I think Danny Brown needed to be in a really stable place mentally and emotionally to reach the creative peaks that he did on this record and stare into the void so unflinchingly in the way that he does on this album, the way that he dissects his problems on this LP and is just so honest about all of them, that kind of requires the focus and bravery of somebody who at least to some degree has faced down their demons. And I think that's uh, certainly reflected on the song Hell For It, where I think, uh, you know, Danny Brown, at least in a way, kind of displays himself as sort of moving past a lot of what he has discussed on the LP. The fact that we, uh, hear him in a brighter light in somewhat better days on his following record, you know, you know what I'm saying, uh, where I think, you know, he's he's in a much more comfortable place creatively, uh, says a lot as well. So don't go into this record looking for some tortured soul to, uh, you know, pick the bones of. For as much as Danny dives into the dark and dives into the deep on this LP, one thing that I absolutely love about this album is that it absolutely truly and absolutely uh, does not fetishize the nastiness depicted here in any way whatsoever. And once more, Danny literally puts all of this to song on the finishing track uh, to say like, look, I, you know, I, all of these horrible things happen to me and I say them to you so that you don't need to do them. I'm, I'm warning you, this is a cautionary tale. So yes, the further we get away from the release of this project, the more I am impressed with what this album means in Danny's over overall catalog and his artistic trajectory. Uh, his rapping and performances on this record are uh, something to behold, not the most technically proficient that he's ever done, but definitely like the most off the rails, the most manic and the most insane. Uh, you know, he has some really impressive bars on this project for sure, but he is like really channeling this wild ODB type energy. You got to give it up for the production as well on this project. The way that it uh, brings in elements of experimental rock, post-punk, psychedelic music, and just abstract shit in general um, is incredible. And it's a testament to Danny's talents uh, that he could, you know, rap so fluidly and so effortlessly over some of these beats and have it just sounding real good. I think this is especially the case for White Lines, those crazy melodies, the way that Danny locks into them throughout the track, Dance in the Water, the pacing on that track. <laughs> is nuts. And Danny is just like yelling his brains out over it like he is a rock front man. And uh, also When It Rain, the groove on When It Rain is one of the most unlikely grooves on any rap song ever. So I think I'm going to leave most of my commentary on this project uh, right here. I mean, in some of these five-year videos, I do kind of note uh, maybe the influence that an album may have had since the time it came out. And I don't know if I could say that so much for Atrocity Exhibition, but that's not, uh, you know, to sort of take away from what makes the album so great or so special. I just think, like, it's it's really a difficult record, I think, to pull any sort of, like, inspiration from, not only because it's based upon such a personal experience, but, like, the sounds and the experiments on this album are so unique and so specific to Danny, and I think so specific to his talent set, it's not really something that I think, you know, even a seasoned rap artist can just get up and be like, yeah, I'm just going to copy this. Definitely one of the greatest albums of the 2010s, one of the best hip hop albums of all time, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, just uh, uh, super creative, uh, super emotionally intense. Hell yes to this record every fucking day of the week. Well, I mean, you know, if you could stomach it emotionally, because it is a lot, not an album I put on to vibe to. <laughs>
<laughs> so, though there are there are some bops on. Really though, really though. Come on. All right. Uh, you're the best. You're great. You're fantastic. Uh, over here next to my head is another video that you could check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Anthony Fantano, Danny Brown, Atrocity Exhibition, five years later, forever.